we're going to, we're actually, there's a group of us writing a paper now on dispelling the myths of creatine. I'm not good evidence to suggest that creatine causes baldness and a lot of other researchers the same way, <laughs> but there's about 10 myths that just drive us uh, really bad or, or irritated when we hear a lot of speculation with it. So we're writing a, a pretty good review paper on some of the myths, but it has no effect compared to placebo. So there's a, a distinction when you do a research study, especially, especially a randomized control trial, if you have a placebo, Creatine usually will always cause some type uh, of side effect in someone because you're taking a, an exogenous supplement. But compared to placebo, we don't see any greater effects on the liver mm -hmm. or kidney. Uh, we actually don't see any greater effects in individuals with or on the cardiovascular system um, or other abnormalities. And the times you hear muscle cramping, dehydration, things like that, they're very anecdotal, excessively high dose, usually during uh, the loading phase. So right now, I consider creatine the safest, most effective dietary supplement when it comes to muscle and, and muscle performance perspective. I know you're joking there about the, the balding, but yeah. I have heard and I've even <clears throat> had questions from clients about, you know, if it's going to accelerate their balding. And mm -hmm. um, I have, that's not something I've looked much into other than it actually seems like there's maybe some <clears throat> relation to DHT, but maybe that's one yep. of the myths. Could you? Maybe it was the one on study that? in the rugby players who took creatine. I believe there was a loading phase as well, and DHT just was upregulated. But just because you increase a hormone doesn't necessarily translate into the, the end product. It's no different than turning on protein synthesis if it doesn't lead to a, a, an increase in protein. So right. the analogy is like, oh, if you do a snapshot that something increased protein synthesis doesn't lead to hypertrophy, not necessarily. Right. So that one study is still used. And of course, you would have to look at individuals long term to see the effects and then look at different uh, causes right of uh hair loss uh over time but yeah i'm not the the best person to yeah, talk right. about it obviously every time i look in the mirror so it's that's fine <laughs> yeah exactly i save um, money on haircuts you know is there is uh, any other studies looking at dht and that or and showing that there was no change or that's the only one that's looked at that's it? the only one i'm aware of that was an experimental trial compared to huh. placebo and i have to think there's other labs out there because it's such a popular topic and we consider it a myth and that is actually one of the myths that we're actually yeah. uh, uh, targeting. Uh, Dr. Tim uh, Ziegenfuss is going to handle that when we look at hormones and alopecia and baldness with creatine. And let's just decipher the, the myth. And is there evidence to suggest, well, if a hormone's turned on, it's no different than if I take uh, creatine and I increase or, or decrease myostatin, mm -hmm. uh, a protein that inhibits muscle growth. Does that mean I'm going to get like 350 pounds of muscle? Absolutely not. So there's right. a disconnect between what's out there from the myth versus uh, the documented evidence. Yeah. It's interesting that it isn't, like you said, it, it's a somewhat popular topic. I've seen it mm -hmm. pop up with how many creatine studies there are. I'm surprised it's not. And it's also, I mean, you know, measuring DHT, you know, just a little blood work wouldn't be terribly yeah. hard to do. I'm right. surprised that it hasn't been uh, replicated. Yeah. The only way to do it is you actually have to measure hair loss right. and do that over time. And then you have to extrapolate what's actually causing it. So then you get, you got to get into genomic sequencing, Right. Eternal X, Y. D. So there's so many variables. You would have to look at a long term study of individuals who had what they considered, and you'd have to define a full head of hair, divide them up into creatine and placebo, and maybe you'd have to look at a 10, 20, 30 year longitudinal study and ask them right. what happened over time. And it, so that's more epidemiological. So uh, I think when it comes to creatine, most people want an acute uh, right. result to get the results out there. So that's one of those things over time. Yeah. Are there any other hormones that we find upregulated in response to creatine? There's many that are potentially uh, a growth factors we see more often than not. So insulin like mm -hmm. growth factor one seems to be increased the mRNA expression and the protein content. And the nice thing about that is uh, insulin like growth factor stimulates bone accretion, but it also stimulates muscle protein synthesis through the mTOR pathway. So that's one right. of the main ways we think creatine can help build muscle. Uh, and the other big one is it seems to decrease myostatins. So myostatins is an inhibitory growth factor. You see pictures on uh, TV of animals that seem extremely muscular. Right. They just basically block or downregulated this uh, 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 growth factor or protein. So we think in animal uh, 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 studies that creatine decreases myostatin, it turns on insulin-like growth factors. So those are two, two of the potential uh, explanations why creatine may cause an increase in muscle mass and or uh, recovery. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just me thinking out loud here. It's interesting. You were talking about how just because you see one thing doesn't necessarily mean it correlates to something else. Right. And 
I think when it comes to DHT and hair loss, that's a reasonable connection. I mean, we, we do often see that. That's why something like finasteride could be pre um, prescribed to people who don't want hair loss, which lowers DHT. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you were mentioning uh, protein there, and protein does tend to increase um, IGF-1, right, and mm -hmm. stimulate the mTOR pathway. And there's some research showing that when you decrease IGF-1 and the mTOR pathway in animals, it extends their lifespan. And yet Correct. we don't see that low protein intake correlates with increased lifespan. So mm -hmm. just, be, you know, there can be theories and a, a bio plausibility doesn't necessarily mean that that's the actual outcome. Yep.